Hello sports fans, welcome to Super Sport World Central. Today, we're going to be going over my 2023 USFL predictions. So the USFL is back for Season 2 and technically Season 5 if you count the three seasons they played in the 1980s. Before we start my predictions, there is a few changes to the USFL you guys should know about. Uh, the first change is the Tampa Bay Bandits are no longer the Tampa Bay Bandits. They have rebranded themselves to the Memphis Showboats. And the even bigger change to the league is the teams will no longer only play their games in Birmingham. Instead, there's going to be four hub cities, and each hub city will be home to two teams. So the four locations will be Birmingham, Memphis, Canton, and Detroit. Birmingham will be home to the Stallions and the Breakers. Uh, Memphis will host the Showboats and Gamblers. Canton is home to the Maulers and Generals. And finally, Detroit is home to the Panthers and Stars. Okay, so getting into my predictions. Starting off in the North Division. Fourth or last in the North, I've got the Pittsburgh Maulers. So they were a league worst 1-9 last season. They've got a new head coach, Ray Horton, who's a former NFL defensive coordinator. And the Mowers, they weren't good last year. I don't really think they should be that good once again. Offensively, they brought in former NFL fourth-round pick, uh, James Morgan, and he's been named the team's starting quarterback. They should also have a solid rushing attack as they brought back their top two running backs, Madre London and Garrett Groshek. And they also um, have their top receiver, Billy Gaither, coming back. So they should be solid offensively. Defensively, they also added former Alabama standout linebacker, and NFL first-round pick, Ruman Foster. So he should be a great defense uh, addition to the defense. In fact, I think he was the best pickup for any team all offseason. So I think he should greatly help the Mowers. And the Mowers, I think they're a team that will finish with a 3-9 record with wins over the Panthers, Showboats, and Gamblers. But then the Mowers, they're a team with a lot of potential. They could maybe win 5-6 games, and I would not be shocked. But uh, they're going to need a lot of players to step up. Like They're going to need Ruman Foster to be good. They're going to need James Morgan to be good. They're going to get a lot of players like that, but they've got potential. And I think they'll finish 3-7, and seven, but they'll be a better team than 3-7. and seven. Third in the North Division, we've got the Michigan Panthers. So they're a lot like the Mowers. A team with a new head coach, a bad season last year, and a lot of similarities. So the Panthers' new head coach is Mike Nolan, who replaces Jeff Fisher, who resigned in the offseason. So diving into the Panthers offensively, they've got three quarterbacks that could start. Either Eric Berrier, Josh Love, or Carson Strong. Berrier and Love both saw action last season, whereas Carson Strong was a addition to the team, and I think a really good addition. I think he should end up starting. But uh, he was once considered a former NFL first-round draft pick, but after a bad season at Nevada and injuries, he now finds himself in the USFL with the Panthers. Now, they haven't announced a starting quarterback yet. As I said, it should be strong, I think. But the Panthers should also have a good ground game led by Reggie Corbin, who returns after having 519 rushing yards a season ago. And the Panthers also added wide receiver Trey, uh, Trey Quinn. Defensively for the Panthers, they, they should have a really good linebacker trio of newcomers Noah Dawkins and Patty Fisher. Plus, they returned their leading tackle from last season, Frank Ginda. Hopefully I said his name correctly. So as I said, the Panthers are a very similar team to the Mowers. I've got them finishing with the exact same record, 3-7, and seven, with wins over the Gamblers, an upset win over the Breakers, and a win over the Mowers. And I think they're going to be just slightly better than the Mowers, uh, because they've got some more proven playmakers, such as running back with Reggie Corbin, but uh, two very similar teams. Teams who weren't great last year aren't great coming into this year, but have a lot of potential. I've got the, the uh, Panthers in third at three and seven. So getting into the top two teams in the North Division, it is extremely difficult. It is essentially a coin flip between the Generals and Stars. Second, I have the Stars. So they're coming off a great season where they went six and four, made the championship game, and ultimate, uh, ultimate came up short to the Stallions losing, I believe it was 33-30. But... They should have another great season. Offensively, they return star quarterback Case Cookus. They've got two great running backs, Dexter Williams and Matt Colburn. Now, they did lose their top wide receiver in Maurice Alexander, who was also their return man as well. But they added former NFL first-round pick Corey Coleman, who should be a very, very similar player to Maurice Alexander. He's a return specialist as well. He uh, should be a good wide receiver. He's a smaller, faster guy, just like Maurice Alexander. And he should be a great target for Case Cookus. Plus, they bring back other great receivers such as Devin Ross, Jordan Sewell, Chris Rowland, and DeAndre Overton. And then you look over to tight end and you find a big t target and touchdown machine, Bug Howard. So the Stars are looking great offensively. I think they've got the most complete, well-rounded offense and the best overall offense in the USFL. And it should once again be the strength of their team. Defensively, they bring back interceptions leader from a season ago, Channing Stripling, who had seven picks last year. They also uh, add defensive end, Ali Fayad, hopefully I said his name correctly, who could be a star on their defensive line. So the Stars, they could once again end up being one of the top teams in the USFL and end up in the championship game, or even winning the championship. I have them 
finishing the season with an 8-2 record with losses to the Stallions and the Generals. And winning the North Division, we've got the Generals. They're coming off a 9-1 season. Now, they have another great team, but I do have a few concerns about their team. One is quarterback, because they lost quarterback Luis Perez, who now plays in the XFL. They still have three options at quarterback, DeAndre Johnson, uh, Kyle Loretta, or Dakota uh, Prukop. Hopefully I said his name correctly. Now, it will, it will likely be DeAndre Johnson starting for the Generals, who was the starter for a portion of last season before he got hurt. And now he's a mobile dual threat guy, and that fits the Generals' offense perfectly, which is a run-first offense. And by the way, speaking of their rushing attack, they bring back a fantastic duo of Trey Williams and USFL Offensive Player of the Year, Darius Victor. But uh, I do have concerns about how good they're going to be passing the football, because Kyle Wada, he's more of a passer, but we saw him last year with the Mowers. He was not good at all. So I would expect DeAndre Johnson to start for the Generals, and I, I still think they should be okay through the air, but once again, I would expect them to lean on the ground. And speaking of their passing offense, they lost MVP Kevontae Turpin, and Darius Shepard as well. Now, they still have three good receivers, Cam Eccles, Looper, Alonzo Moore, and Randy Satterfield, but they're going to need one of those three wide receivers to step up and be their true number one go-to guy. And the Generals, they should also have another great offensive line if they return four of their five starting linemen. So offensive with the Generals should be set, have another dominant run game, and their passing attack should be pretty good as well. Defensively, the Generals, uh, once again, have a good defense. They lost a few corners, but they should still be good. They bring back defensive linemen, Deion Caesar and Toby Johnson, linebackers Chris Orr, and defensive backs Drevon Henry Askew, Shimon Milani, Christian Tutt, Mike Bell, and others. So the Generals should once again be uh, one of the top teams in the USFL on both sides of the ball, and I have them with a 9-1 record, winning the North Division with their lone loss coming to the Stars. Moving on to the South Division, last there we've got the Gamblers, so they're definitely the worst in the South Division. They might be the worst team in the entire USFL. Offensively, They've got Kenji Bahar at quarterback. He He's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of him. I, I, he could be good. He's pretty pretty mobile, good on the run. On the run. But we saw uh, quarterbacks like Shea Patterson with the Panthers not work out when that was their play style last year. So I'm, I'm not too high on Bahar. And then they also bring back Mark Thompson, who should be their best player this year, especially offensively after they lost wide receiver Isaiah Zuber. The receiving core really isn't that great. And defensively for the Gamblers, they aren't good because they lost almost all their good players to other other leagues. They lost Donald Payne, Reggie Northrup, uh, Chris Odom, uh, to Gray Scales, and Will Likely. So the Gamblers, they should definitely be the worst team in the USFL. I've got them finishing with a brutal 0-10 record. Now, they could get a few wins, but I just have a hard time either adding losses to other teams because I think the other teams are good or putting extra wins because I don't think they deserve for other teams. But I've got the Gamblers at 0-10. They could be better than that, though. Third in the... Uh, South Division, we've got the Memphis Showboats. So, as I said before, this is the Tampa Bay Bandits. They were rebranded to the Memphis Showboats this past offseason. And they should be a solid team. But I, I don't really think they should be anything too good. They should be solid. Offensively, they've got three options at quarterback Cole Kelly, Ryan Willis, or Brady White. Brady White will be the starter in Week 1, but I would definitely expect to see some others, the other quarterbacks, see action throughout the season. They brought in former NFL running back Alex Collins, and he should greatly help a poor rushing attack from last season where last year's quarterback Jordan Tayama was their leading rusher. Now, they do have a good receiving trio of Derek Dillon, John Franklin, and Richard Davis. Defensively with the Showboats, there aren't many changes. They've got a great defensive front, which should uh, get them consistent pressure on opposing quarterbacks and have a good run defense as well. I have the Showboats finishing with the same record as last year at nine, uh, sorry, at 4-6, and six, but they could be a bit better. I have them beating the Gamblers twice, the Panthers, and the Stallions once, but the win over the Stallions is in Week 18 when the Stallions will have nothing to play for. Second, in the South Division, we've got the New Orleans Breakers. They're another team with a new head coach as they have John DeFilippino replacing Larry Fedora. So offensively, they brought in quarterback McCoy Bethel Thompson from the CFL, who is widely considered to be an upgrade over last year's quarterback Kyle Slaughter. Now, I am concerned about their rushing attack because they surprisingly released star running back Jordan Ellis over the offseason, and their top back is now Anthony Jones, who saw some opportunity to last year and took advantage of them, but I still think they could use another uh, good running back to really help their rushing attack. And they've got a good receiving core as well as they return Johnny Dixon and Jonathan Adams, one of the best receiver duos in the USFL. Defensively, they will start defensive lineman Davin Bellamy, but they still have a fantastic linebacker duo of Gerard Fernandez and Vontae Diggs, and they should anchor their defense. The Breakers should be good once again. I have them finishing 5-5. Five and five. 
Now, that is one step below, one game below their mark last year at 6-4, and four, but I still think the Breakers are a great team, and I think they can be better than the record. Another team, I think they will be a bit better than the record shows, but I have them losing to the Stallions twice to Panthers and the Showboats. And winning the South Division, I really don't think this comes as a surprise to anyone. It is the defending USFL champion, Birmingham Stallions. So, they return a lot of their key players and, and are looking to be uh, one of the best teams in the USFL once again. Both their good quarterbacks are back in starter Jamar Smith and dual threat backup Alex Magoo. They've got a great rushing attack led by CJ Marable and Bo Scarborough. And now, the Stallions will need a wide receiver to step up, maybe even two, two to step up, because their top two receivers last year, Victor Bolden and Osiris Mitchell, are both uh, not on the team this season. And they will need one of these three, the following wide receivers, to step up, either Marlon Williams, D uh, Deion Kane, or Davion Davis. And now the Stallions also lost a few offensive linemen to the XFL, but I think they should still be okay in that area. And defensively, for the Stallions, they lost uh, star linebacker Demarcus Gates, but they still have several other good linebackers and players, such as star linebacker Scooby Wright from last year. I have the Stallions with an 8-2 and record, losses in their first game of the season and their last game of the season to the Generals and Showboats. And as I said before, their loss to the Showboats is only because they'll be resting starters. Getting into my playoff predictions, so we've got rematches from last year. And actually, same thing as last year, playoffs will be held in Canton, Ohio. So the semifinal games, North semifinal, we've got the Generals and Stars. The third time these teams will meet, obviously, because it's each team plays in the division twice, it's the third time for both teams and both semifinals. But I've got these Stars defeating the Generals for the second straight season in the playoffs and advancing. But this is a game that could go either way. I think these team, two teams are so even, it could truly go either way. And in the South semifinal, we've got the Stallions over the Breakers pretty easily. And in the championship game, we've got another rematch, the Stallions against the Stars. And I have the Stars getting the win. So, they will have a USFL championship. I think they could have won last year's championship had Case Cook has not broken his leg in the championship game. And I think they should be a really, really good team once again. And the Stars will continue their streak of at least making the championship game in every single USFL season, as they also did that last year and all three times when the league existed in the 1980s. So getting into my award predictions for this year, MVP is Case Cookus. I think he's the best quarterback in the league. I think he's the best player in the league, and he's going to be on a great team. He's going to be so good for the Stars and be a good a big part of their offense, a good passing attack. He wins MVP. Offensive player of the year, we're going to go Bo Scarborough of the Stallions. They're going to have a really good balanced offense, and it could be Case Cookus here, but I think Scarborough will have a great season. He was fantastic for the Stallions as a midseason addition last year, and I'm really excited to see what he can bring to that team when he's able to play for the entire season. He should definitely be among the top running backs in uh, the USFL and top players in the USFL offensively. Some other contenders for Offensive Player of the Year, as I said, Case Cook is also potentially Darius Victor, last year's Offensive Player of the Year, and uh, maybe even McCoy Bethel-Thompson, Breakers' new quarterback, but my Offensive Player of the Year pick is Bo Scarborough. And Defensive Player of the Year comes down to two linebackers for me, Scooby Wright, Ruben Foster. I opted to go with Scooby Wright, because I don't think the Maulers would be good enough for Ruben Foster to win a major award, such as Defensive Player of the Year. But then that didn't stop uh, anyone from winning Defensive Player of the Year last year as a player from the Gamblers won it, and the Gamblers were one of the worst teams in the USFL. But I've got Scooby Wright winning Defensive Player of the Year. And Coach of the Year for the second straight season is Mike Riley of the Generals. So those are my 2023 USFL predictions. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications. I do my best to post as often as possible. Uh, let me know in the comments who you have winning the USFL championship. But I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications. I do my best to post as often as possible. And I will see you in the next video.